Yeah, okay, go. Hello, everyone. I'm wondering if my audio is on. Um, oh, my hair's been special, isn't it? I just had a bath, but didn't wash my hair. I just tied it up and I haven't brushed it. This is the sort of state you get me in, guys. Um, right. Can everyone? Okay, you can see me. Fantastic. I'm just going to shut that. I am going to full screen you and then I am going to share my screen. It's a way of seeing how many people are on. Hmm. No. There we go. How is everyone? I'll be able to see in the chat. Oh, nice. Thank you for joining me on Good Friday evening. I thought people would be, well, I'm sure some people are busy with family and stuff, but can I can hear that baby. Yeah. My, two of my kids are in the room with me because they don't have their own rooms, apparently. They need to be right here, um, which is always fun. Right. So I do have um, questions that people commented on a thread in Facebook and I will read them all out. What I'm going to do is briefly go through these slides that I've made because I feel like that might start you off with a good footing. And I'm going to sort of assume that people don't really know about lead magnets. So if this is, you know, if you have been doing them for a while, then we can get into, into your questions um, just at the end. This won't take that long to go through and we will 100% be done by nine o'clock. Um, I can't, I can't hear that now. I don't think so. My daughter's just testing out her keyboard in the room. Um, your keyboard, yes, I. Right, okay. Can everyone see the screen where it says, what is a lead magnet? Elfie, my love, if that is going to make noise, I'll need it out of the room, okay? It, 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 Perfect. It, I'll just, okay, I'll just... hit some keys so I can hear. Um, yeah, I can hear that, honey. I'm yeah, perfect. we'll need to... Why don't we just pop it back on the landing where it was and then you can play there? Or in your room, or in Ira's room. I'm not in Ira's room. Okay, good times. Right, I'm going to get into it. So, what is a lead magnet? A lead, right, well, we're breaking it down. A lead is someone, a person who might buy your product. It is someone who has shown a vague interest in some way about you, about your market, about your niche, about your product. And specifically, a lead is someone whose contact details you want when you have, because then you can obviously talk to them about your product. So it's basically a person um, who is your ideal client. A magnet is obviously something that attracts. So it's something that attracts this lead to give you their contact details. Um, so uh, I've gone back, hang on examples of lead magnets they can be pretty much anything obviously we're talking about digital products so it's going to be digital they can be videos they can be i've put ebooks but i don't mean like big chunky ebooks although you can do that i saw i've done i i um you'll probably see me commenting on various people's stuff on instagram and it's because i like to see what other people in the industry are doing for their lead magnets um and how that i um such a nerd about it I like to go through their email funnels and see what they're doing as well so it's not that I need their products it's just that I like to see what other people are doing I get inspiration from it and everyone does it to each other it's quite funny um but today I downloaded a 60 page pdf about instagram so people are giving away really chunky ebooks but you don't need to do that so when I say ebooks it could be a couple of pages it could even be a checklist it can be a one page checklist um when I say ebooks and checklists basically a pdf to download so videos pdf downloads you can also do as a, a lead magnet a series an email series so if they give you um their email you can say right I'm going to do a seven day let's say it's a organizing your house series and you send them free content every day Maybe it can be like one thing to do to clean your, to clear your house up in a week. Um, so like a mini course almost, so you can do that as well. We can go through plenty. This is just like a quick little exercise guys of with the slides. And then we can go through um, details for your lead magnets and also the questions um, just after. So I don't know why my slides are clicking backwards today. It's not most fun. Yeah. So your lead magnet should solve your ideal client's first problem. Um, 
or it should give them something of value. So there will be times when your client doesn't really have a problem per se. Um, and the example that I you'll hear, hear me use a lot is florists. If they are creating video tutorials on how to um, create seasonal wreaths, for example, then people don't have a problem so much. That's a, like a nice luxury item to buy like a video on that. Um, but they might really appreciate a um, a quick little video on how to um, make a spring bouquet, like a, a, a really quick one. Hi, Yoda. And so that could be a lead magnet. It's something that you know that that person is really going to appreciate. It's going to be definitely in the same ballpark as your digital product. So if you are, if your product is a guide on gentle parenting, your digital product is definitely not going to be, you know, a three part series on how to bake vegan pastry It's not going to be that it's going to be something like um, a checklist of like how to calm yourself down when you're feeling triggered by your child, something like that, something that you know that that person who ideally will want your digital product is going to want. So your digital product will be solving the bigger problems the bigger picture it will be delivering a lot more value but what i would say is give as much value as you possibly can in your freebie so at the moment i don't know where this slide is hang on it might be the next one yeah so i just pulled up my stand saw for an example at the moment and i have rearranged this recently and i am always changing because i like to test things out and see how things work the only freebie i have got up at the moment is the recording of the first digital product workshop that i did um and i i'm testing things out i do actually have a very mini quick start guide to digital products but at the moment because i'm testing out my email funnel i don't want to have people coming from an ebook and then also coming from a digital product video i want to see how many people are going to engage with that how many people um respond to it even watch the thing once they've downloaded how many people buy a kit after they've watched it and i'm testing that out but i have previously offered a load of stuff that i really wasn't even you know following up with with regards to marketing after so i had a quick start guide to home education in here the reason I've pulled that down is because I get so many DMs from it. And as I've told you, and everyone probably knows, I'm kind of taking a step back from being the like basic home education advice person because I just get really sob, like loads of horrible sob stories in my DMs and it just makes me sad. Um, and I also can't help everyone. So I've taken away the um, the free one. I'm also, I also did a, a free training with education, otherwise the charity, the home ed charity the other day on how to use TikTok. So I'm sort of trying to hand over to them. Yeah, gentle parenting. So I've also had a free quick start guide to gentle parenting. Like thousands of people have got that. Um, and I also did a um, one on side hustle. So jobs that, that are not just digital products that parents can do from home. So things like UGC, all the stuff that I've done, or well, most of the stuff that I've done, apart from like dog walking and ironing, um, but ideas for that. So each of those are very different audiences. So I don't, re I don't target those people now. Um, everyone's had the chance to opt into my email list or opt out. And that's kind of by the by. But what I'm saying is at the moment, I just have this recording of the digital product webinar. And then that is enough to show people that I know what I'm talking about and that I can help them. And then they are going for an email funnel to hopefully at, at some point buy the digital product kit or the teacher freedom kit. So that is how that works. So how do you get people, like how do you even make lead magnets? How do you get people to the lead magnets and get them on your email list? You make content that is gonna encourage people to download your lead magnet. So for example, actually, let me have a quick look at Insta because I did this yesterday, I think. It might have been the day before. Um, yep, so the reel that I did yesterday, it didn't get a load of views or anything like that, um, but it was a reel that encouraged people to comment workshop and then they got the link to the live workshop that I did last night. So that is an example of how you get people to download your lead magnet. Um, yes, babe. Would I like to show my sister's name? Yes, you can say your sister's name. I reckon you did I'm trying to see if there's anything else on here that was lead magnet. Um, content I can't see any but I will be making more so you always keep an eye on my Insta because that's an indicator of what you guys can be doing as well Um, because basically Insta is such a good platform for digital products so you make the content you basically you want to show people that you know what you're talking about that you can help them um, and that they will probably want this thing then 
the, the point of a lead magnet is to obviously get their contact details because you want them on your email list. And this is a really good place to build that relationship. Do you remember, I think, you know, most of you were in the, the digital product workshop either last night or a couple of weeks ago. And, oh, wow, sorry, my daughter's just showing me her needle punch. That is gorgeous. That is so pretty. I can't see any of the dangly lines. That is very lovely. Um, what was I just saying? Digital product workshop, email list, nurture, so act, attraction, right? So there are three different kind of areas, um, different types of content that you will make uh for your audience so one is attract so you want people to follow you and then one is nurture and you really want to build and this is a really important part of the i mean it's all part important but this is the a really chunky part of the journey you want to get people to know like and trust you so the way you do that um is by sharing tips about what you're talking about um share your own story share your journey share day in the life stories with them offer them more freebies if you have something to offer them um, and also offers as in, um, you know, they might have discounts or off your products or things like that. And you also in your email list obviously can sell to them as well. I kind of think of all marketing as selling eventually, but I mean saying, you know, this is here and now you can buy it. So in an email list, and I realize I've kind of gone past magnets and freebies but the point of them is to get people on an email list there are specific triggers like emotional triggers and mental things that will encourage people to buy and what you're doing in the email list is you are basically hitting these these points you are building authority and so that means you know tips on your area is building authority so if I was doing a gentle parenting guide I would want to share probably um, stories about how I had handled situations with my kids that week and tips um, that you know work for other families as well so you're building authority you are demonstrating that you know what you're talking about you have experience you are uh, you know not necessarily an expert but hopefully an expert in your field and that you can help them that also builds trust regularly hearing from someone and that rig that content being consistent um, as well as helpful builds trust you're also building reciprocity. So that is the idea that if you give people something, they are more likely to want to give back to you as well. So the fact that you will get, you know, if you if someone was doing like a 10 part email series, then by the end of that series, you might be like, okay, they have really provided loads of value. I'm happy to hand my money over. I'm happy to pay for their product because you know that they're not just trying to get a quick buck and rip you off. They are really, you know, the real deal and they really know what they're talking about. So you're hitting that reciprocity button as well. Social proof, this is so important. And so this is why I share like some of my students results because people need to know that you can do what you're talking about. Um, in regards to different markets, obviously this is gonna look very different, but if you're basically saying to someone, I can teach you how to do it, getting testimonials and reviews from other people who you've taught how to do it, um, or if you're right at the beginning of your journey yourself, you are your social proof, like, you know, um, talking about your journey and how you've learned the thing that you're teaching. That's really good to share in your email list as well. Um, Likeability is really important. Obviously, I'm guessing that if you really didn't like me by now, you wouldn't be turning up to live, um, live trainings. Not everyone is going to like you. And this is so, so important. And yet again today I don't know if any of you saw but dragged into some nonsense on TikTok of people saying well this, you know this person's a scammer no matter what you do um people are not going to like it someone said you can be the sweetest sweetest peach in the world and some people just won't like peaches so I would say that you want to be likable to the to your audience to the people who you're actually talking to and this is the same. I've had a lot of practice with this, obviously talking about home education. I, I you know, I wanted people, the home educators to understand me and people who wanted to do home education to to like and trust me. I'm not that bothered about the Daily Mail readers. In fact, if they liked me, I'd be very concerned um, who think that, you know, homeschooling is ridiculous and that we're all snowflakes and all the rest of it. So when, it, when I say likability, I don't mean be likable to everyone. If you're likable to everyone, you're doing something wrong and you're not being authentic. Um, but do you think mild mannered and sweet can be likable online for sure but I think that you shouldn't aim for that if that's not you and I'll tell you what I you know before TikTok I was on Instagram and I was doing YouTube and blogging and all sorts and I tried to be more mild mannered and sweet than I actually am 
And where I grew the most and the quickest was on TikTok when I dropped that. And I was like, you know what? I don't have the energy to create a facade. I don't have the energy to pretend to be someone I'm not. So just be yourself. Um, If someone's naturally like that, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think who, if there's anyone I find. There is actually so there's a, a girl called Callie who homeschools in the US. And I say homeschool because she's American, so they call it homeschooling. And she's super sweet. She's a super sweet homesteading Christian homeschooler. And she's lovely. And that's genuinely her. She's so lovely. Um, and that that comes across. So I think that if that's genuinely you, then for sure. The other thing, um, the final thing that you can build in your email list, you know, right, is anticipation. So you, people like to look forward to something. And if you are launching something, then obviously you can let your email list know and they can look forward to that as well. So email lists are really, really handy. I would recommend this, you know, I'm not doing a whole massive training on email marketing right this second, but I would say when someone downloads your lead magnet, don't then send them an email saying, hey, I've got this, do you want to buy it? You need to like nurture them. You need to build the relationship. They need to like you and trust you. Um, I used the, I think, analogy in the live last night about dating. Like you wouldn't just walk up to someone and try and kiss them. You know, you would like say hi, you would make some jokes, you'd tell some stories, you might buy them a drink, you might go for dinner, all the rest of it. You know, you build up that relationship before asking for a sale whatever that is on the day. Um, so you, you want to like, basically don't make it weird, you know, like it's, it's really tempting, especially at the beginning to get really excited and be like, oh, I want this sale. But if you rush ahead and kind of ask for it too soon, people will be put off. So I would send a, a few emails, um, that are, yeah, not, not selling before you say, Hey, by the way, I have got this thing. So Kirsty says, I love to put trolls in their place. Absolutely. I don't, yeah, I'm trying to spend less time doing that because <laughs> I could, I could do it all day. Um, I'm just going to put up the questions from the people who commented. Um, oh dear. Did Kate Boundary, are you in here? Did you get in? Let me just see. Cause someone's commented. Where's the link? And I'm hoping you got in. Oh, oh bless her. I don't think she did. Oh, I hope, right. Um, I'm just going to reply to her on Facebook because I do want her to come in if she can. Facebook can be annoying, can't it? Because it pushes, um, it pushes some comments down. Right. I did have the link right here. Came out, okay, brilliant. Good, good, good. I wanted everyone to get in. Right, I've got to go back to the thread that I posted before. Sorry, guys. And then find your comments. <laughs> Here we go. You can entertain them. That's very kind of you, but you're good, babe. Right. Would be go to, would Okay, I'll start with Faye. I'm going to go through these comments. There are 15 of them, I believe. And then I will take comments from um, questions from you guys, if that's if that is what you would like. So just like get your comments, get your questions ready. Um, Faye says, would it be, it would be good to know how you go about marketing your lead magnet. Would SEO come into this? And any tips on getting good SEO and getting potential buyers to the lead magnet? Thanks, Hannah. Uh, Faye, are you on? Just say in the chat if you are on here. And are you referring to a website? Because this is very different to marketing on social media, which is what I generally talk about, particularly on Instagram. I don't think Faye is in. Okay, so SEO, for I'm just going to do a brief thing. SEO is search engine optimization. And this um, is really relating to Google. <laughs> you got in anyway, well done. Um, hi, Em. SEO is search engine optimization, and this is basically referring to the process that Google uses to rank um, websites. So if you have really good SEO and you're ranking number one, you'll be the first result at the top of the Google page. And obviously that's where everyone wants to be because you're much more likely to click on that than anything else. So if you have a website, yes, SEO would absolutely come into it. Now, there is kind of SEO also in social media platforms as well. So TikTok and Instagram both work with SEO principles. So what that means is if you are, it, it's mainly about keywords. 
if you are um, doing something about, and I know I say you use the same examples all the time, guys, but it's because I talk about it all the time. If you are doing tropical gardening, you want to use the phrases, the keywords that people would be searching for if they were looking into your product or your niche. You want to use those words and phrases in your text on the screen. You want to talk about them. You want to use them in your captions and your hashtags. So that is SEO and that is how you apply it to TikTok and, um, and Instagram. And I'll show you a quick thing. Um, I don't believe that Instagram has this feature, but TikTok definitely does. And I'm going to show you an example of how you know if you have good SEO. Right. Today, I did a video because other people were calling me a scammer on TikTok. So I did a video about the difference between resale rights courses and teaching people how to make digital products in their own niche. If you look, I can't see my own face, so I can't see if you can see this. Hang on. There we go. Right. If you see the top there, it says teaching courses. So what I did there was I used text and this is relevant to Instagram as well as TikTok, by the way. It's all slightly different, but it's it's generally similar. I use text at the top of the screen and it says the difference between resale rights courses and digital products. So those two things, resale rights courses and digital products, are both keywords that people would be searching for if they wanted to know about this sort of area of work. I also then, in the caption, have put a really long caption and that also um, has keywords in such as digital products and then the hashtags are things like what are digital products digital products master resale rights etc and I did post it thinking I don't know if I want to be on this side of TikTok because it could have got dodgy but that is how you use SEO on social media so that's one way that you can attract people to your content is making sure that you're getting all those keywords in um in your captions on the screen you're talking you're using auto captions and you're putting them in your hashtags as well so the second question is if you feel like you're learning about something and not able to teach so go more for the sharing your journey option what can you offer would you just focus on building an audience first and an email list for when you are and then i said hi lovely what is it that you're learning and it's a combo of developmentalism attachment parenting and caring for a child with type 1 diabetes okay so that is a great question. Uh, something's happening. I think my kid's trying to reset my Apple password. Can we not do that, guys? Someone's online. Um, I would start building an email list. And what I would do, what you can do is just instead of having, uh, we're kind of, and we're kind of going through it now. So... I'm going through questions at the moment, but this is also recorded. So I'll be putting this whole thing in um, the group in Facebook. So you can go back and watch the first bit of it. Um, right. What I would do is you, you don't need a lead magnet to get people on your email list. You can just say sign up to my email list and you can literally just get them to put their name and email in. So if you're at right at the beginning of your journey, you can just say if you want to hear from me, on this journey and you want to connect then pop your email name and email in the other thing you can do is if you know what digital product you want to do is you can say I've got this coming so if you'd like to you know it's kind of like a wait list if you'd like to be on the wait list or if you'd like to know about this when it comes out put your name and email in so those are both options for if you don't have something like right now um, but still building that email list how do you market a lead magnet different to marketing a main product or the same are there any specific kinds of marketing you suggest to drive your audience views interactions up before going from your lead magnet to your main product okay one second i'm just processing that to drive your audience views and interactions up okay so you market a lead magnet. you market anything in the same way so but what i would do with um with a lead magnet is obviously you're you're offering the lead magnet to people. So that means that people who want that are probably at the start of their journey. So you'll be doing the attraction kind of content. So that is, um, someone did it really well and actually here, here today, Naomi, Naomi, who's doing publishing. I saw her do a great video. Naomi, are you on the call? And do you mind if I pull up your video that you did today on TikTok? Cause I do watch what you guys do. Hang on, are you on here? Hi, can I pull up your TikTok from today? Do you mind? 
Thank you. I was very impressed. Um, here we go. So Naomi W. Author. Naomi is teaching other parents. Oh, was it from today or was it from the other day then? Hang on. No, it was from a couple of days ago. From 12 hours ago. Right. So Naomi has put, again, I need to pull up. I don't like seeing myself on here, but I need to see myself to do this. Here we go. Naomi has done B-roll. B-roll is just a video of you doing something. Um, cool. Yeah, if you're watching each other's videos, that's awesome. So encourage each other. Um, Naomi is has, is just doing, what are you doing? You're typing at a computer. Yeah, that's typical B-roll. Very good. The B-roll, which just means video, by the way, should be something kind of related to what you're talking about or your life. So, for example, Naomi is um, working at home parent and teaching people how to publish their own books. So for her, typing makes sense. If you're doing a gardening account, do some gardening. If you're a baking account, do some baking. So she's done that. And then she's put point of view, POV. You're a mum to young children and you've completely lost yourself. Then you find my account. So that is attraction videos. So that is you are um, you are talking to people who have never heard of you. And then you're getting people to follow you. So that is the kind of content that you do right at the beginning of people's journey so it's called the top of funnel content so with that funnel you've got attraction you've got nurture and then you've got convert convert means they're buying from you so i would do a lot of the attraction content you could do things like um i'll show you another example i haven't done one of these for a while but um Sorry, guys, I want to show you this, the content that I know has done well on here. And I thought it was ages ago. I didn't realize I posted so much on here. Here it is. God, this is cringe. Right. It says, hi, I'll show you in a second. Hi, my name's Hannah and I home educate my three girls. This is when I was talking about home ed. They've never been to school or nursery and I practice gentle parenting. And then it flashes up at the end. What does it flash up? If this sounds like your vibe, follow me. And it's just me pissing about. Sorry, guys with uh, messing about with some herbs in the garden outside content by the way filming outside will generally get you more views than inside content that is just a weird thing that happens so that again is top of funnel content that got 2000 likes and 80 comments and i have oh that's it and i it got comments because i put as the caption what's your most burning question about i'm guessing it's home education yeah home education gentle parenting or working from home so that's top of funnel content so what you could do is do that kind of content where it's really like hey this is me nice to meet you would you like to follow me but but in that content also say hey and I've got this free thing for you just be really casual about it like I've got this free thing put it in your um in your caption and then people can comment and get it or they can go to your stand store um Tasha said do you need to have all the other content there too what do you mean my love which other content I'm just going to keep going through the list of questions. What do you feel helps build your... Oh, Kirsty, are you on the Are you on the call? I just want to check if I've answered your question. Kirsty, did that answer your question? Do you need me to go through the second? Did that, did that make sense? Is that what you meant? Okay, cool. Feel free if you want to unmute yourself and and like ask it in a different way, and I'll give you a better answer. Like, please feel free. I just want to make sure that I have said it in a way that makes sense. I'm going to assume it's okay for now. Cool. Yeah, no, that's fine. Cheers, Hannah. That's all right. Yeah, anytime. I've... Cool. Emma said, "What do you help uh, feel helps build your own confidence?" I think when I watch people who are confident, authentic, it makes me want to follow and buy. This really struck me about Jamila's. Yes, Jamila is absolutely smashing it. Jamila's handle, I'll put here, um, is Speak Algerian, and she is selling guys on how to speak Algerian, and her content is brilliant. Guys, she's doing so well, um, so she's really good to follow for inspiration, um what I help what I think helps build my confidence honestly I I'm I'm probably in a bit of a, a little bit of a different bit on the journey to you but at the moment um not consuming too much content helps me build my confidence because if you over consume other people's content you will probably start overthinking and you'll start thinking yours is rubbish 
because no matter where you are in your journey, there's going to be someone who is doing better than you or looks like they're doing better than you. And even though like I know people, uh, this is weird to me, but I know people look at me and they're like, oh, you know, I want where I am. I don't feel like that because I'm consuming other people's content and I'm looking at people who are making you 200K a month and all this silliness. Not that it is silly and they are really doing it, but you know, and I feel, oh, like, oh, I'm not doing enough. So don't over consume people's content. Um, what builds my own confidence is doing doing my best as well. So knowing that I have done everything I can to help people. So if you believe in your product and if you believe in what you're doing and you believe in the way that you're showing up, then I feel like that helps as well. Um and then, yeah, feedback from people. So now I'm starting to get reviews from people, which is obviously great. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, following people who look, not look like you, like like you, but I follow people who are like hot mess mums because if I follow the people who are like these corporate girl CEOs doing a similar thing, that's not relatable to me. And it doesn't make it, like that's not, something I'm I'm trying to get or I'm trying I'm aiming for so following mums who are doing really well in their business but it's still like a hot mess and they're still with their kids at home that is inspirational to me and that builds my confidence um because it means it 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 makes it more yeah more attainable like more realistic more gettable whereas when I look at the women in suits who are doing ice baths at five in the morning I'm like I'm not going to do that so (laughs) it can't yeah Emma says, what's a good way to do the attraction content without showing yourself? Um, You can show, so let's, uh, Emma, what's your, I remember you asked me, you were in the live and you asked me a question. What What is your, um, what's it called? Niche, market, what's your product? I'll give you an example. Oh, I've just come off uh, onto speak, Hannah, and then it's easier than we type. Hi, lovely. Hi, yeah. Hiya. Um, so it's, it's um, parent anxiety and then sort of going into teen anxiety and that, um side of things I remember um, cool. yeah I just remember you saying to me about not showing like you know the coffee shots and things that you see all the time and stuff yeah. like that but I was thinking what other things would be good yeah to do it with for now till you build your confidence and maybe show myself on it later or something cool I love that I love that you're still aiming for it because some people do write yeah. themselves off and I think like just keep it on the horizon that maybe one day you will um yeah. so with the coffee shots the point I was making there it was probably a little bit too specific. There are, there is, there is B roll or basically stock videos that you can buy that a lot of people are reusing. And a lot of it is beige. I don't know how else to put it. Beige kitchens with beige coffee mugs. And it's all very neat and their living rooms beige and white. And it's all like, but they're buying that content. It's not actually their life. So the point I was making there is just, I wouldn't use stock imagery to, um, to build your product because it's not you it's not authentic it's not like it's not going to get people to connect with you and it's just going to make it harder for people to to connect and then buy from you so what I would do is anything relate if you can do anything related to what you're talking about so with baking you could you know do a an image of rolling out pastry or mixing stuff oh I tell you a really good account actually for this hang on and they do show their faces but they also have done some really good um reels that are faceless it is two sisters homestead so i'll show you an example they're doing a sourdough starter series don't ask me why i'm following them i think they're probably in the home ed homesteading lot but look so they've got a sourdough starter and they've just done a little video of the sourdough and then some tips on there and they also did um i think it's because their food looks good i've been watching as well cooking you know they're stretching dough out and they're complete that that's all faceless and they do show their faces sometimes but a lot of it is just food so if you can do anything with that with your specific niche I think something like squeezing a stress ball or tipping up one of those oil sensory things or lighting a candle or writing in a journal um, or fluffing a pillow getting some lavender oil anything that relates to mental health to calming to, to anxiety um I think that could be really helpful so just just you don't have to show your face but stuff that you would do related to what your your product is basically does that make sense 
It does. Thank you, Hannah. That's really helped, actually. Okay, That's both things I'm stuck on. Thank you. No worries. Also, if anyone's looking at um like equipment for filming stuff, there is a um a phone holder that sort of bends over. So because I always find it really hard to like film down. I don't really need to, but when I have had to, it's been a pain. I generally will get loads of books and you like balance it. It's very unprofessional, but you can get a like a camera holder that bends down and will hold your camera. To be honest, I bought it and I got so frustrated trying to put it together that I put it in the bin. So I still don't have one um, and I don't need one, but uh, yeah, I'm not good at DIY and I just get really frazzled by stuff. So that's gone, but it, they are good if you're going to film down. What's the next question? Oh, anything outside as well. For anxiety, I do walking feet on grass, um, trees, things like that. But people also really like human elements in it. So if you can get like feet or hands in it, as opposed to just um, outside footage, for some, I don't know why, don't ask me why, but it does help. Is there a light and mic you'd recommend for creating videos? Um, honestly, I wouldn't invest in massively expensive stuff. I would go on Amazon and get a ring light um I'm not even using a ring like right now usually I do but I think it was like 20 or 30 quid and that was after like a year of TikTok or something I invested in a big one because I was doing TikTok lives a lot um you can get really cheap from TikTok shop if you're on that you can get really cheap clip-on lights to your phone you can get like six pound mics to plug into your phone so no I would go get you know use what you've got a, a good iPhone honestly it has been the best thing for me because I can see the difference between a good iPhone and an older phone um but then once you've got to that bit then it doesn't particularly um, matter found a ring light with a bendy thing for about 25 quid brilliant but yeah I would always say start with what you have I think also I know I did this at the beginning I think a lot of people buy the equipment because they feel like it will bring them on quicker but actually it's the skills that will bring you on quicker that will leapfrog you and then you can invest in the equipment. Don't think that it's going to particularly help if you get better stuff apart from maybe a good phone. I think I'm struggling for content because I don't have a niche. Okay, cool. I'm going to, I'm, I'm just going to finish this list and then I'll come back. Otherwise I'll get distracted. Um, <laughs> right. Laura says I'm definitely procrastinating as I don't feel have a clue how to get started. Okay. Tips on how to take the leap. I know you're doing a separate social media q and I guess as others have said, how do you market your freebie, set your systems up, a plan of what to do once you have people on your mailing list? Okay. I'm continuing with complete overwhelm, but planning on pushing through. So this, yeah, I do need, I do need to drink. Um, oh God, that's a big question. I'll come to that after as well, TikTok and IG. So these are huge, huge questions, Laura. So what I will say is you just need to, okay if you're at this place this frazzled forget the freebie and forget email marketing you want to get on instagram and build an audience warm up your audience and then offer them your product basically after a while forget the rest of it because that i mean as much as i will say yes i love the fact that email is um email is brilliant for marketing it's got a high open rate all the rest of it like good it, it you need to do what you can do and if the, all this is going to burn you out then don't do it I would, like start with you You can literally make a hugely successful digital product business with just Instagram and stand store you you don't necessarily need email so really if I'm if, if you're frazzled don't do the systems just do Instagram content do the different kinds of videos so do if you're whenever you're making a video think who you know what is the purpose of this video am I attracting people so in which case I want them to follow me so tell them to follow you say follow me for to to, to you know learn about this that and the other um or follow me if you're this sort of person or if you enjoy this sort of content so you get the attraction content in there you've got the nurturing so you share your story you share tips um you share funny things about like behind the scenes you share trends and then you convert stick with that just on Instagram and then link it in your stand store wherever you've linked it and forget email marketing forget freebies forget funnels forget all the rest of it so you just do that if you're frazzled um Jean Paul says finally a day I'm not working oh bless that was when I posted it for the other day and then my little girl broke her wrist so I, I don't know if you're in sorry 
Uh, I have my main product, the ultimate self-publishing guide. This is Naomi who is doing well on TikTok. But I don't have a free product yet, which I know is probably the wrong way around. No, it's fine. Do I make a summary of the contents or just make part of it available for free? Okay. So when I released the digital products test kit, I did not have a freebie available at all. I literally was like, here's my kit. So you don't need to do this. This is for people who are asking about it. And I do think it's, if you have the mental and physical capacity, it's great to get people on an email list at the beginning, because if something like Instagram and TikTok goes down, you know what it's like, then you have a backup. You have a way of directly contacting your audience. Um, but again, you don't necessarily need it. So, and it also, I would say it also depends on the price point of your product, because if your price point is not very high, then people probably, you know, might not necessarily need a freebie if you're really warming them up. You're right. What was that, babe? Okay. Um, if you're really warming them up in your content, so you're delivering value, you're sharing tips, you're proving your authority, all the rest of it, you're likable, then they are likely to buy. So, Naomi, have you done a freebie yet? And if you don't mind me asking, how much are you publishing your self-publishing guide for? Not yet. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Yes, babe. What was that person's name at the bottom of the screen? At the bottom here, oh. Emma. Mm. Yeah. I saw her before. Yeah. yeah. She's got a nice. Um, the mom holler made me feel normal. Yeah. <laughs> Been like that all day. So on special for the ten, back up twenty five. Well done for putting it back up. I always like to see that. Um. Right. So I would, with yours. I would get on an email list. I would say, if you want to learn about this, get on an email list and then give them, like if you're doing, the, the freebie could be literally tell them you're gonna do a mini course and then send them an email every day for a week um, with tips about self-publishing in, like prove yourself to them in then. And then after that, say, now if you wanna do it, like, uh, you know, then get the publishing kit. So you don't necessarily need to have a freebie to download. Your freebie can be sign up and I'll send you a, a course, like do a mini course, um, which is just an email every day with some tips in. Uh, and if you're on Standstore, you can literally plug it into Standstore, like do your whole email flow through Standstore. It's not the most um, sophisticated email provider by any means, but they are working on it. They're making it better. I work with Stan as well. Um, I've worked, I've used them since the beginning, by the way. So it's not that I'm working with them and saying they're great. I, I love them. So I'm working with them. Um, they actually contacted me because my lead magnet was doing really well. Ironically, I can't remember which one that was. Um, but yeah, so you can just do an email. You don't have to have something to download. Uh, da, da, da. Right. I think that is all. That's all the questions in the thread. So I'm going to Scroll back up. Do you want to just comment your questions now? If anyone has questions about lead magnets and stuff, we've got like 18 minutes. Oh, I'm going to have a couple. Yeah. Seven, six, why six? <laughs> I don't know what that means. You never talk about using Facebook. Is that because it's not worth using too? No, it's not because of that. It's because... I've seen, because I think Instagram is a fantastic platform that I'm familiar with and I know that converts really well. Um, but I am, I will, I mean, I'm technically kind of using Facebook now with my group, but that's not really, that's not to sell. That's like as a community, but I will learn more about it. I use paid ads on Facebook. Um, well, I actually currently don't use paid ads on Facebook, but I've always used them for the books that I was selling with Curious Little Monkeys. They use paid ads. So I ran their ads. Um, you can absolutely, what I what I would say is I, I don't want to overwhelm everyone. So I don't want to be like, oh, by the way, there's TikTok, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, email. Um, Yeah, you can absolutely link the two. So if you've got a Facebook page, you can ha just have everything repurposed from Instagram straight onto your Facebook page. And, you know, if at the beginning, I'd say there's a lot of things to do. So just pick one platform and master that platform. And I would say that which should be Instagram. How do you build an audience when you're starting with zero posts? How do I, how do people want to follow me when I post once a day? If I do an attraction post, they'll come to my page and find out very much, of course. So what you want to do, if you're right at the beginning and you haven't got any content, that's actually a really good opportunity. So I will, um, 
I will. Um, yeah, I I would start posting authoritative content. So what you want to do is position yourself as an authority in your niche, in your market. So I would be posting um uh like if you have any testimonials, post them, talk about the problems that people have, um, talk about your experience with a problem, talk about how what you're doing is gonna be a solution to that problem. Solution selling is a big one. So how does your product how is your product the solution for their problem? So post, I would say like 10 of those videos first. Then, I mean, yeah, five five to 10, but I would say 10. So people like come on and they're like, oh, okay, cool. There's enough to follow here. Um, do that and then start doing the attraction posts after that. Instagram is better for converting for digital products. TikTok is fantastic for physical products. Um, I've only focused my publishing things on TikTok. Should I change to Instagram? I personally would change to Instagram, but TikTok is really good for attracting and warming up an audience. So you, if you can do both, then fantastic. But I wouldn't expect to sell a lot on TikTok um, compared to Instagram. But, you know, it might be that a lot of people who are interested in publishing are on TikTok. A lot, a lot of this is about finding where your audience are as well. But I will say that if everything's equal, Instagram is just way more engaged in terms of converting than um, TikTok. So yeah, I would say if you can do an Instagram account, do an Instagram account. How many hours a day, a week did you spend at the start of your journey creating content? Oh my life. Um, okay. This is really hard to answer because it's been like a merge. So like 2020, I started digital products and it was nonstop. Um, I was working with Laura from Curious Little Monkeys and we used to have sleepovers. Our kids would sleep over together and we'd be up till midnight, one o'clock in the morning working on stuff. So obviously that's not what I do now. That's as in not, that's not my business now, but I still, I mean, last night I was up till two, but I was doom scrolling to be fair. Um, I, I probably could have gone to bed at like midnight. So at the beginning, I would say, you're going to like spend as many as you can on it. Don't burn yourself out. That is lethal, but spend as much time as you can on it and expect to spend a lot of time. You can't spend too much time doing this stuff. Everything else being equal, like don't ruin your life. But I'm saying like at the beginning, that's when you really are creating the content. You want to spend a lot of time on that push. Um, And then once you set up your content, that's going to start doing some of the heavy lifting for you in terms of sales. Um, how many hours a day uh and then I had a thought that I've now completely forgotten yeah it's also like it depends on you it depends what you want as well your goals and everything else like it's it's the hours I spend doing exactly what I'm doing would be different to someone else because someone else might have a partner to pick up around the house or make dinner or whatever I don't so it's all it's like I have to put in more hours in a way because I don't have other help I don't know it's it's I think it's vague basically um but I honestly couldn't tell you the hours a lot I put in now pretty much most of the time when my kids are not with me I'm working but that's because I'm scaling up and I'm in a really good position that's not because I have to 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 survive um yeah and what I would say is I had this thing that was it was called the five ones so have a look um, about that but it was about picking one platform one target market one product and giving it one year and I think that that is a really really good guideline there is another five one it's um a conversion thing but I would like ignore that um so just pick like one product one platform give it a year and then and then see how you feel basically um I think that before that like that is enough time to learn a lot of stuff if you quit before that, you're kind of, I would say, missing out on opportunities to, to keep learning. And like, if something's not clicking, you can go and find resources to learn that thing, if that makes sense. Baby massage course is almost done. Awesome. Very slowly building my socials from scratch. Well done. That is, is hard going. So well done. Adding attachment parenting to bulk it out. Do you think an email list, a mini series work for me? Yes, I do. What I would, yeah, 100% with the attachment parenting thing, I think that would work lovely as like a seven day or even even do it as like a month. So spread the emails out, but it depends how quickly you want to convert them. Yeah, do a series on, you know, 
baby activities, things you can do to attach with your baby, baby bonding, focus on nurturing the parents as well. So like mental health stuff potentially for parents. I think that would work really nicely. Is there a way to collect emails via TikTok? My TikTok is growing at 600. Cool. My Insta is at 60. Okay. I only have 38 people on my email list. When I email them, I need product. 20 of them, what? 22 of them purchased. Oh my God. Well done. I know I need a bigger email list. Okay. Yes, you do. So hang on. I'm trying to figure out the question. Is there a way to collect emails via TikTok? Yes, there is. So basically you're going to make similar content to what you're doing on Instagram, but you're going to do it on TikTok and you're going to tell them to go to the link in your bio. It's much harder to do this on TikTok than it is with Instagram. TikTok censor everything. They don't like people clicking off the app. They don't like people clicking in even into the link in the bio. And so they, they even if you say link in bio, they're going to squash your video a little bit. So you have to get smart about how to do it. So I say, go to my stand store and then generally people sort of figure it out. You can use text on the screen as well. Um, so yeah, I would say, you know, do a TikTok, like TikTok, the thing about trends is they work really, really well for like converting quick, quickly. So you could do a funny trend and and like put on the screen, like grab my free, whatever in, in the, in my bio, in my stand store. And I think that could work well. Um, but that's absolutely, that conversion rate is insane. And what are you doing? And please send me a like a review of the kit because I, I want I want that to come That's amazing. Sorry, can you hear me? All right, I was talking away then. I hadn't unmuted my phone. <laughs> Hiya. Hi. Um, I just do. I, I just the problem. I don't think I've got much of a niche. I just do like a little. Um, I can't even think. Sorry, I've got three kids running around the house, so I'm blippy on in the background. Um, <laughs> I just do like um, children's activity packs for trying to encourage English imagination and creativity. Nice. Awesome. Okay, so I think that your... Con hang on, what's your... Babe, I need my phone a minute, it's okay. What's your TikTok handle, love? It's Rose and William. I know what you're talking about. Yes, I, your logo's Boots, isn't it? Yep. Oh. Oh, yeah. I, wasn't I was keeping it completely faceless, but I think I'm gonna jump in and be brave and shove my face in there at some point this week. Cool. Sorry, I'm I'm struggling. I'm really struggling to hear you. I'm so sorry. Just because of the background. Um. Sorry, it's probably just because I got blippy on so loud. I'll just mute myself and just. Okay. Okay. <laughs> chat. Chat. In the chat. Oh, this is great. Hang on. Free download. Nice. Okay, cool. So this has, let me just see what kind of video this is. Yes, babe. Yes, you can. Um, oh, you're funny. I like this. Okay, so guys, this is Rose and William. If you've got little kids, I'd recommend following her. Um, I like this a lot. Yes. So it's about finding, okay, I'll give you an example. It's about finding creative ways to hack TikTok to let them show your videos to people. So when you've put here free download, the word free is going to have been flagged to TikTok as offering something that people have to click out of the app to get and they don't like it. So instead, when I do it, I put FR and then I put two threes because people can read it as free, but it's not going to flag it up to TikTok as being something else. Um, it's yeah, this is great though. And so what I would say is keep offering it in videos. Um, I'll show you something that I did that that's the sort of thing you can do to do this. Um, I did it ages ago. Well, I mean, first of all, I did this video the other day when I was about to do the thing, the live digital product workshop and I put text on the screen. I just did a chatty a couple of minutes video about what I was offering. It didn't do particularly well because TikTok knows what I'm doing. Um, but you can literally just talk and say what you're doing. But then there was one that I did. It was a trend that was doing really well. What time is it? It's, it's six minutes to nine, babe. Oh God, where is it? Um, There was a trend and the trend was like, oh, it was... <sighs> Sorry, I really want to show you where it is. It can't be that far away. I'm going to find this for you now if it kills me. 
What, baby? Emma. Emma what? Emma. Emma what? Emma. Here we are. She is, right. The trend. Some days I am just on fire. Why not I say that? that was it. Uh, so it was a trend. And I, and there's text said, when you're hosting a free workshop for the confused girlies who want to understand digital products. And then underneath I said, limited places, run and book in the you know where. And then in the caption, I've put this Thursday, 14th at 8pm. So that was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, like, yeah, 50, 50 comments. So you can do that as well. Um, yeah, it's about playing around with what TikTok will let you do. But mm -hmm. trends for those sorts of things are quite good. Uh, is it better to do reels or normal post reels? Um, when you do new posts, shall I repost a story or make story setting, check the grid? That's not working as well as it used to. You can, I tried it the other day. It didn't really work very well. Um, but I, I see quite a lot of people doing it and I think there's no harm in doing it. So I would always just shove it up on your stories. Um, depending on the stories are quite specific on how to sell as well but depending on what you're putting in your stories yes yeah, stick it up in your stories reels I would say definitely not better than normal posts but photo carousels are doing very well um I've got an Instagram training I'm like halfway through writing it I'll probably be doing it live and then like anyone who wants it is going to be getting like a 30 day content plan of literally what to post as well because I think this is really confusing for a lot of people but basically do reels do as many reels as you can um I have too many ideas I don't know what to put it down to okay community of new home educators in the area that follow you and told you they don't really know where to start with home education I want to focus on the early years okay I could post about different home ed styles different approaches yep absolutely okay cool so what I would say is that you could absolutely have home educators as your target market I honestly wouldn't recommend it because you can get, you can do the same products and, and focus on uh, it with early years specifically, that audience is fire for buying stuff for their kids with the, the, um, the eBooks and the books from Curious Little Monkeys, the biggest seller by far is the early year stuff. People are obsessed with getting their kids like educated when they're like two and three. I don't know why. Um, but I would say that you can target the early years parent market without niching it super down to home ed. However, if you are a home educator, it gives you authority in the sort of education sphere. You're obviously an ex-teacher, which does it as well. Um, and what I would say is have a look at what's out there already, because there are already quite a lot of people online doing this. So you want to try and differentiate yourself a bit. I'm wondering if something like Hang on, let me just think a minute. Termly, termly or seasonal stuff, I think, knowing the market really well, obviously, I think there is a gap with seasonal stuff. Um, and you could definitely, your actual content could definitely be about different home ed styles and different approaches. Home ed, obviously, on TikTok and Instagram is really growing as a, as a topic and people are very interested in it. So... I would, I mean, Fallon, if you want to like post all your ideas in the Facebook group and let everyone jump on and, and brainstorm with you, that's that's what the group's for as well. Like we can all help you out if we know everything you're thinking. It might be that your ideal client is in the Facebook group. Someone did this today and was like, oh, you know, said to someone, I'm your ideal client and I want to see this. So it might be that people can can help you out. Helena said there was a point for you where it was an unpaid full-time job. Yes, TikTok was very much that for a, a long time. Do you edit all of your videos or talk and post? I edit everything. My stuff is very curated to look like it is very off the cuff. That is deliberate. A lot of it is off the cuff as well. Um, but yes, uh, TikTok specifically likes very FaceTimey feel videos. But Instagram is a little bit more is, is more polished. Um, and I always edit to make sure that I haven't done a millennial pause where I've paused at the beginning or, you know, that I, that, and that I've made sense and that I haven't said um a million times. So yeah, I would, I do edit all of them, but again, if it's completely overwhelming, all you've got to do is just start posting, just post your unedited stuff. Just, just get into that habit of literally hitting post, feeling the fear and just having it up there. You've got to do like, we're working towards the minimum viable product. So so content is better than no content. 
if your child was 16 and was following your advice and courses, how can you ensure they're kept safe while trying to go online? Oh, God, that's a big one, babe. <laughs> Faceless for sure. I My kids don't have social media and they're not allowed it. Um, and people say like, oh, when are you going to give it to them? And I'm like, never. <laughs> um, Faceless, definitely. I would probably want to. I mean, it's hard because they're 16, so they're like getting to adulthood, but I would want to monitor comments or check them before they check them maybe because there's some awful stuff said in there it's not something okay I'm yeah just to keep myself safe it's not something I'm going to recommend or like um say like oh I think that's gonna do that but if it was my child I would definitely be um keeping it faceless no identifiable information and checking the comments before they saw them Uh, and also the dms definitely checking the dms yeah, I like the idea of one platform. Definitely just pick one platform. I have my niche and my ideas. I keep thinking I need to learn as much as I can before doing anything. This is so classic. Uh, you're not alone. Everyone thinks this. I still do this when I'm looking into a new area. Um, guys, we're going to hop off in just two minutes. Um, stop learning now and start putting something out into the world. Like your challenge now that you've learned some stuff is to post something that I can see online. I don't care what it is. And then I'd like you to post it in the Facebook group and tag me and say, I've posted something. You've got to like, you're never going to make any money. If you've got all your ideas in your head, you're going to have to start something. I know it's really difficult and really scary at the beginning, but you've got to get your stuff out there. Uh, it's not a bad move to do that. No, it's, it's good. And it learning, you need to learn as you go. Yeah. Cause you, you don't know what you actually need to learn at this point. You've got to start and then you'll be like, oh, I need to learn more about TikTok. I need to learn more about Instagram. I need to learn more about funnels or whatever. So start posting and then figure out where the holes in your knowledge are and then start finding stuff to fill in gaps. Mm-hmm. Um, add your face this week. Awesome, Em, I love it. A glossary of TikTok words. I will put one in the Facebook group. Hells, if you could just remind me of that in the Facebook group if I don't do it, then that would be great. I'll post it and then you can know what words to not use. My views have dropped two figures after reaching 700. Is that on TikTok or Insta? We have a freelance proofreader. Awesome. Fantastic. The actual difference between posts and reels. Reels are videos. They're just just like TikTok. um, Whereas posts are static. They're photos. The email side of it scares me. Don't do it. Honestly, you don't need, like, don't do everything. And like, just start, just do Instagram for now. Could an ethical moral flavor to content help grow an audience? Yes, but be very careful with this because um, if you grow a sensitive audience, they will be very sensitive. And then, and this is what I did. This is what I did. And then anything you do that they don't like, they're going to eat you. So I would, I would um, be more robust and have a thick skin about stuff online, basically how to on editing okay cool for tiktok or instagram or both my instagram following is nearly two and a half thousand followers brilliant that's aimed at my actual books okay change it to publishing content or start from scratch on a new instagram account because it's books i think you can pivot if i were you i would start posting your publishing stuff like do a gentle like pretend it's a venn diagram so you've got your current content about your books and then you've got your new publishing content do an overlap where it's like oh when i was publishing this book this is what i had to do to get there take people on a journey of behind the book so people that liked that book be like oh this is what i was thinking this is where i wrote it this is the publisher i don't know anything about publishing books by the way i've only ever done it on like amazon kdp but um yeah you know take them on the journey so they're starting to come into that world gently as gently as you can um eldest wanting to launch this autumn okay cool i'm on the ehcp journey an ehcp timeline that sounds fantastic i love that idea for freebie and a product navigating a book navigating the spectrum or how to create an eots these are both fantastic. I think that is so confusing and overwhelming to people and it's scary. And I think anything that will help them with that is is gold. So really, really good, Lainey. I keep re-recording videos numerous times. I'm never happy because it's my face, but that's confidence and will come in more practice. Same here. If it helps, I use a filter on Instagram. Um, I don't on TikTok, but um, 
do what you need to do to get the content out there. And then as you go on, you can sort of hone it a little bit. And I do re-record stuff as well. Um, but you never stop doing that. Oh, thanks, Helena. Cool. Cat okay. is walking over my lap. Yeah, Helen is there. TikTok, I was getting 200 for ages, got to a few six or 700, last few dropped to 12. Okay. Let me just have a look. Sorry, baby, can I borrow that again? I'm going to have a look at your account quickly. I have an account. Not your account. Not your account, babe. That's your video. Please? M's. M's? Mm hmm Right, I'm having a look. Okay, cool. Right. Maybe we need a TikTok class. Um... It's dropped. Let me just see what you said. Getting 200 for ages. Got a few six or seven. Last few drops of 12. Okay, you have, the views have picked up, but it's still in, um, interesting. interesting. Um, she's very pretty. She has, um, dark hair. I'll show you after. Um, Mm -hmm. hang on baby I'm just concentrating a second I'm just trying to figure out why it would have dropped off there's a big drop between these two one day hmm did you repost this from somewhere or is this from like did you repost it from insta or is it just filmed in um tiktok Let me see what hashtags she use as well. A lot of people are talking about two to three hundred jail at the moment. Mm. Okay, so so I'll show you one that I can tell why. Weirdly, this has got more views than some of them. Um, this oh, um, so this one is a bit blurry filmed in tiktok okay if you can if you can make them as clear as possible because like this is a much clearer video although i'm having a look sorry this is probably something i shouldn't be doing live that's good yeah so try and make it as clear as possible the unless they're clamping down on young children being on tiktok which is something i've seen across a few accounts i'm just going to see if there's any rhyme or reason to it um I can't tell why it suddenly dropped. I would start making some content like point of the um, attraction content. So I would say like, hi, I mean, you can literally copy my video. I don't mind the one like, hi, I'm, um, I home educate, follow me if you like this sort of thing. I would start making some attraction content. And I think this might be too dark, like just, just dark weather. I'm trying to, okay, you haven't used any hashtags. Okay. So TikTok doesn't know what your video is about here. It says find related content. It doesn't know because there's no SEO in it. So people are not searching anything that would make this video come up because although the Hello Sharks and the use of the audio is really good, looking at it here, hang on. Yeah, there's there's not anything that it would know what it's about because there's, hang on, is there kids in that? Yeah, there aren't kids in it. You said kids, but there aren't kids in it. And then the, with the caption, there's hot drink, slice of cake. So it might be confused about what it's about. You want to be as consistent as possible. This is me being really nitpicky, by the way, because I honestly don't know why it's got so few views. It's kind of weird. Um but I'm going to find, I think you'll probably have another one that does have. No, so TikTok, I'm looking at your videos and your videos don't have in the search bar above them. They don't have the keywords. So you want to be very much more specific with everything to tell TikTok what it's about because you don't have any of those keywords there. Um. Yeah, for someone in Facebook did post about this. I think I need to do, I'll do a social media thing on it, a training. I'm going to pop off now, darling. Sorry, that was really um vague, Emma. I was trying to have a look and it didn't really, didn't really help, did it? 
but if it helps tiktok have done that to me before sometimes i've put and including for my clients and that sometimes um i've posted and nothing's happened um so which is kind of embarrassing but i'm just seeing if it's done it to me recently what i have noticed is that it's taking longer to get views so i used to have um I used to have, you know, a lot of views quickly and I was, I'm scrolling through my feed now thinking oh, I'm going to find a video with very, very low views. Okay. One of them, 4,000 or something for me, that's, that's, you know, proportionately low. Um, ah, interestingly, it's where I was mining about TikTok, but they, it has, they've all acquired views over time. So I think TikTok has, has spread them out more. I'm based on nails. Do I need to say the word nails as much as possible? Yes. I'll just share these tips and then it will hop off guys. But basically, whatever you're talking about, talk about it, put it as text on the screen as a hook. So like the first five seconds could be like how to do um, like spring nail art or something like that. Put it as a hook, put it in your caption. So here's how to do spring nail art. I like to use gems, glitter, anything that are the words that are in your market, your niche. Um, you know, I use acrylic nails. I, I'm just riffing here, but you know, say as much as you can in the caption using those words that people will be searching for flowers, flower art on nails, nail stencils, all the rest of it, make it sound natural. You don't want to sound like you're just stuffing it in there. It's called keyword stuffing, but also use it in your, um, hashtags as well. Plus go to other accounts that are the similar, uh, similar as you and similar to you and like their stuff, comment on their stuff and build up your FYP feed to be nail based stuff as well. And then not only will it help your account, but you'll get inspiration as well from them. Cool. Right. I, this, I will share this. I'll download it and then I will um, post it into the Facebook group right? So you can all go back and, um, and watch it when you want. I hope it was helpful. Was it vaguely what you were hoping for? I'm never sure where to pitch this stuff. And is that okay? Cool. Goodbye. Amazing. <laughs> Everybody says bye. Um, the next training will be next week at some point, and I will ask in the Facebook group. I'm getting the feeling that a social media one would be helpful for TikTok and Insta. Um, so I think I'm going to aim it towards that. Who's the green one and who's the black? Who's going at social media? Okay, cool, awesome. All righty, just going to stop sharing my screen. And I hope everyone has an absolutely brilliant Easter. Have a really, really nice time. Um, hope you get lots of chocolate. And um, and I will see you in the Facebook group. Say bye. Night, everyone. My pleasure. Night. Thank you for all joining on Good Friday. It's so sweet.